State Acoustic are one of the league's rising teams, while the Atlanta Steam have something to prove. They collide next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f get out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your butt on their throat. LFL football has arrived to Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome inside the booth of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza alongside Bobby Huco. We are at the Infinite Energy Center, and we've got an interesting matchup for the 2017 season. It's the Austin Acoustic coming into town to take on the Atlanta Steam. Austin, a team that is very dangerous. We saw what they did earlier this season against Seattle. And with the Atlanta Steam, the criticism has been they haven't beaten anybody of significance in two seasons. Absolutely. This is what I call a defining game. We're going to find out by the end of tonight which team is ready to play and move on to the playoffs. One of the things we do know about these two teams, they are loaded on the offensive side of the ball. A lot of weapons. Defense wins championships, but offense thrills. We have two great offensive teams tonight. For Austin, the quarterback, Kishie Winfrey, in her second year, one of the league's rising stars. She's tall, statuettes. She runs like Cam Newton and has a cannon for an arm. She's got her top receivers going tonight. Chastity Morales, the new face of the team, is her go-to receiver. Watch for her tonight. On the other side, Cassandra Bills. She played great against Seattle. Great downfield speed and great hands. Now for Atlanta, on their offensive side of the ball, it's the triplets. They've been together now for four years, so they're starting to mesh namely Dakota Hughes at quarterback. You've got Lauren Ziegler at the wide receiver position and Adrian Purnell at tight end. Absolutely, the engine that runs this Atlanta machine is the quarterback, Dakota Hughes. In her fourth year, she's a great quarterback, but won't become an elite quarterback until she wins an LFL championship. She does have a great receiver. Lauren Ziegler, the most complete player in the LFL, put her outside, put her inside in the slot, great hands and great speed. And then at tight end, Adrian Purnell. We know her as an all-fantasy defensive player, but she's a strong tight end, great hands, and a clutch receiver. That's it for the pregame show. It is time to lace them up. It's the Austin Acoustic and the Atlanta Steam. Kickoff is next. Back to LFL football night. A beautiful setting in downtown Atlanta, Georgia. The Austin Acoustic versus the Atlanta Steam. A marquee-type matchup, Bobby Huco. This is the game of the year for both teams. You can feel the electricity here in Austin. That is Lauren Ziegler getting us underway. A great leg and boots it out of the back of the end zone. Cassandra Bills, the big name for Austin, was back to receive, will not get an opportunity. We get our first look at, believe it or not, the number one passer in the LFL and Deshea Winfrey. Winfrey, when I spoke to her before the game, she is fired up about tonight's game. She really thinks she can beat Atlanta because she has her top three receivers playing for the first time together tonight. Cassandra Bills, Leilani Lopez, and Chassie Morales are all in action. There's the numbers for the 2016 season, a moderate rookie year, but Winfrey is lighting up the boards here in 2017. Here's a first and 10 play down the field, has a receiver. That is Michelle Marshall. In under eight seconds, there is the vertical passing game for Austin. I like my tacos with some hot sauce. What a fast start for Winfrey. She's on fire already. Watch this. A wheel route to Marshall. She burns Fox Burwell, who's regarded as one of the top defensive backs in the league. What a start for Austin. A 28-yard connection. Michelle Marshall in her second year has had a huge impact on this offense. Coach Dane Robinson and this Atlanta crowd is in shock right now. They are, it's unbelievable. What a start for Winfrey. This will be a one-point attempt, and that is Kendria Robinson in the backfield. Direct snap and into the end zone. Stop the presses. Austin in the lead, 7 to nothing. I'm in shock. 
When I interviewed Dane Robinson, he thought they were going to dominate this game. We're not even a minute into the game, and Austin's up seven. Incredible. Check my earlier note on a 28-yard connection. That was from 40 yards out on the dime in stride to Shea Winfrey is having one of the more impressive years we've seen from a quarterback. Dakota Hughes, this is going to be a shootout with these two. Look at those stats right there. Four touchdown passes, regarded as one of the top throwers in the league. The way Winfrey's playing and with Hughes, this is going to be fun. That is a quick screen, Lawrence Ziegler. And Ziegler breaking through arm tackles into the secondary. Ziegler, just like that, gaining 20 yards. That is the explosiveness of this offense as well. We spoke about her in pregame, one of the most complete players this league has ever seen. She should have been down right there. Austin, don't even look at her. She breaks tackles. The most complete player we have ever seen just get the football in her hands. That is something we talked about in the pregame show. That is, This is the fourth season that Lauren Ziegler and Dakota Hughes have been in the same system. So all of that continuity is counting for something. This is Dakota Hughes on a keeper. She'll gain seven yards. Great read by Dakota Hughes. A basic speed read option right there. Defensive end crash. There's nobody outside. She kept the ball for seven yards. Good play. A second and three. Ball at the Austin eight yard line. You could see a little bit of confusion from that offense. Dakota Hughes under center. That is Brittany Demery in the backfield. And we've got a false start. That was not a good looking set from the beginning. And that is going to lead to our first timeout. We've got a seven to nothing ball game. Austin ahead. Wake the fuck up! Right now you're sleepwalking, and the things I told you was gonna happen are happening now! Bullshit on defense, and now we wasted the goddamn timeout! Get your head out your asses! That is head coach Dane Robinson and defensive coordinator not happy with his defensive unit. Not happy at all. The very first play they go deep, and that's the only threat Austin had was a deep ball, and they let it go. A second and three toss play. That is Demery, the bruising power back. She'll gain four yards. Look at Kendria Robinson, one of the spark plugs on that defense. They're talking trash right now. They really think they want to take the game to Atlanta. And the coach and the quarterback told me they want nothing less than a win tonight. Look at Allie Dudley, not impressed at all by Demery. That's what I like about Austin. You don't get that from a lot of the younger teams in this league a sense of confidence they are thinking playoffs and going to the championship they're not thinking about just being atlanta tonight a first and goal ziggler in motion toss right demery again touchdown atlanta demery's got great widescreen vision as a running back she sees holes she knows how to get there and she gets in the end zone watch this basic sweep she reads her blocks there's the hole inside bad tackle right there she powers into the end zone Cassandra Bills of Austin, outweighed by 30 pounds, wanted nothing to do with Brittany Demery there. To be a championship team, you have to take her head on. You have to make that tackle. Somehow, she didn't do it. We've got an extra point attempt coming up here. Believe it or not, Atlanta down in this game, 7-6. to six. Atlanta coming in a heavy favorite, a 12 and a half point favorite. Dakota Hughes in this offense going for two here. That is Ziegler in motion again, a poor handoff. And that ball was fumbled and recovered by Austin. Jessica Salazar, she ran through the football instead of taking the football. Bad exchange there cost them the extra point. A four play, 35 yard drive by Atlanta just when they had to answer Austin. That high powered vertical passing game of Austin, Atlanta delivered to Shea Winfrey going back to work. We sat down with her earlier. Well, my comfort level is definitely at an all-time high right now. We have Leilani Lopez back. We have Brenda Lynn back. And they were two key players that we were missing the first game. Um, Steph Wicket is no longer with us. I mean, she got injured. But I do know that with the uh, addition of Brandy Salty, we're definitely going to do great things with our line. Each day, we are definitely a work in progress, and we're going to improve and improve it each day. But as of right now, I think that we are going to have a great game tonight. 
a confident to Shea Winfrey. And on the other side, we sat down with head coach Dane Robinson talking about how a championship has eluded this team. Talent doesn't win football games. Domination of details and playing all four cores of football is what essentially is going to get us that sixth game being Legends Cup. Until we do that, we're always going to be uh, considered a team that's not as good on paper as we are on the field. He is 100% right. They have all the talent in the world. They just haven't finished games against the big teams. And look at the fire of Michelle Marshall being stopped for a three-yard loss by Quilla Franklin. But that goes back to the confidence we talked about earlier. Austin is not coming into this game intimidated at all. Not at all. Last year was their year to learn about the LFL, learn how to play this kind of football. They really think they can win a championship. They're not scared of any team in the league. Come here, come here. Run the goddamn spike. I don't care. They come in those, it's two and one. They're handing the fucking ball to the lead zone. I've watched them more than you. Get it done so I can get that result. Too many fucking excuses. We're clear, let's make it happen. Listen the fuck up, Amber. Deuce Black Laser, fucking A. I don't think I've ever seen Dane Robinson this frustrated this early in a ball game. Never ever. He is totally frustrated right now. His defense has not come to play at all, and he's letting them know about it. That is to Shea Winfrey right up the middle. A gain of 14 yards. You talked about it. That is a dimension Winfrey gives you. And check that. Was that Cassandra Bills? Let's take another look at this. No, that's Winfrey on a design quarterback keeper, 14 yards. You talked about Cam Newton. Cassandra Bills on the recovery, that was a fumble. She runs just like Cam Newton and she knows how to protect herself, more importantly. Some quarterbacks don't know how to get down and take the hit. She does, that's why she stays healthy. In case you're wondering, to Shea Winfrey, five foot eight, 160 pounds, one of the larger stature quarterbacks in the game. That is a handoff, Michelle Marshall. Great open field tackle, Keon Harrison, as we meet the starters for Austin. Leilani Lopez, wide receiver. Nicole Stoffel, tight end. Brenda Lynn, tight end. Cassandra Bield, wide receiver. Brandy Stolte, your center. Michelle Marshall, running back. Tashay Winfrey, your quarterback. It's going to be fun to watch that passing attack tonight. To Shea Winfrey right now, the number one quarterback in the LFL. And she's got Cassandra Bills, one of the most exciting receivers in the league. That is a second and 12 handoff. We have another fumble. Barely hung on by Michelle Marshall. Another loss of a yard. Smart play by running back Michelle Marshall. She didn't get the handoff good from Winfrey at all. Instead of trying to pick the ball up, just fall on it. You got another down, another play, just recover the fumble. I hate to do this to you this early in the ball game, Bobby Huco, but she didn't get the handoff well. A third and 10 now, ball at the Atlanta 13. That is Winfrey back in the shotgun. A quick slant, barely caught and actually deflected. That looked like it was intended for Leilani Lopez. Let's meet the starters for Atlanta. Amber Clark, cornerback. Quilla Franklin, cornerback. Adrian Fresnel, the strong safety. Alfie Gore, defensive back. Jessica Salazar, middle linebacker. Keon Harrison, defensive end. Brittany Dimery, defensive end. As we can see already, it's going to be up to safety Citrus Fox Burkwell to keep the receivers in front of her tonight. Now a critical fourth and ten. That is Winfrey going to take off with it. And look at the open field tackle by Amber Clark. What a play by Clark. Great cornerbacks. They have to have run game willingness to make a tackle. You have to be able to throw your shoulder with a big back like Winfrey. Great, outstanding defensive play. How about that stop by Amber Clark? We've not heard much from Clark. The Greenville, North Carolina native making her first start for the Atlanta team. Most cornerbacks, they're buffet tacklers. Like they pick and choose when they want to make a tackle. Clark comes in every time and puts her whole body into it. Atlanta now taking over. Still trailing this game, seven to six. That is Adrian Purnell getting to the outside, gaining five yards. 
We sat down with the six-year veteran and talked about her legacy. Where I am as a football player individually, I'm proud of. I think I've done some spectacular things, um, but it's not about that. It's about a team effort, and I haven't gotten a championship yet, so I can't retire until I get at least a couple of those. One of the game's true pioneers, apparently sticking around till she gains a couple championships. That is Dakota Hughes, Lauren Ziegler. We talked about the triplets. Dakota Hughes, Lauren Ziegler, and Adrian Purnell. And we saw it play out there. Boom goes to dynamite. Lauren Ziegler is on a mission. A go route, she flat out burns Cassandra Bills. No deception at all, just flies right by her. And Dakota Hughes puts it on the money. What a play for Atlanta. Lauren Ziegler in her sixth season. I love to see great competitors like number 14 finally gaining the recognition and success that she has. She has one of the greatest ever. I like how she is a competitor. She was so disappointed about dropping, I think, one ball against Chicago. She is on a big time mission tonight. Now the extra point attempt, Jesse Locklear, not even touched, walking into the end zone. And Atlanta, for the first time, with under three minutes remaining, gains the lead at 13 to seven. What happened to the defenses tonight? Wow, all offense. We'll get another look at Austin. Austin coming in as the number four ranked offense and the number two passing offense in the game. You know what's funny? Both coaches, their game plan has gone out the window. Austin wanted to, for some reason, cover the A-gaps and put the ball into Cody Hughes' hand, let her throw. I don't know why when she throws like that. An empty back set, Winfrey down the field, connecting. That is Cassandra Bills. That did not take long after Bills was burnt by Lauren Ziegler, coming back with a 35-yard connection. Will you throw me another marshmallow? Because Winfrey is on fire. Unbelievable. Another bomb back to back to Cassandra Bills. If you can do this, I can do it better. She told Hughes, wow, what a play by Texas. After all that tape that Bills put out there following the Seattle game, down the field vertical passing, I am shocked they have not rolled a safety over to Bill's side. Right now, Dane Robinson, he might have left the building. He's probably so beside himself. Twice now, they went over the top on their supposedly talented secondary. How frustrated is Dane Robinson at his secondary right now, giving up two deep balls to Winfrey? Sit down. Sit down. We can't play man coverage. We can't. Sit down. Sit down. We just, we just can't play man cover. So now I have to rework our whole fucking scheme because once again, they're just running clean. I have a coach upstairs saying, you just can't play physical. Pick on number 11, please. They can't jam the receivers off the line of scrimmage right there. Bills ran right by Quilla Franklin, and Franklin can fly. Now Atlanta going back to work. That is Jesse Locklear. A collision with Michelle Marshall, but gaining six yards. Jesse Locklear, I love to watch her play. She doesn't look fast, she doesn't look tough, but she destroys people and gets positive yardage all the time. That six yard run now sets up a second and four. And now before Atlanta knows it, they're in a dogfight, one they were not expecting against the underestimated Austin Acoustic. A second and four, a little razzle dazzle from the offense. That was Angela Eliason, a name you don't hear often, gaining eight yards. This is how to run an option. It was actually a triple read for Dakota Hughes. She kept the ball. She didn't hand it to the fullback going in, went outside. She could have kept it herself, but no, she tucked it out in and then pitched it outside. Great play, great read by Hughes. I'm glad you read that as a nickel back from high school football. That <laughs> thoroughly confused me. Now a first and 10 ball at the Austin 21. Hughes trying to buy time, rolling right into the flat, has a receiver, and connecting with Lauren Ziegler. 
watch how she buys time in the pocket. You mentioned it. This is a great quarterback. Instead of running, she sees her receiver breaking open, and she throws the ball to an area where she'll be open. Great throw, low throw. The only one to get catch it is Ziegler. Again, Hughes looking strong so far. We're starting to see some of that chemistry pay off after being in the same system for four years. Those two are also best friends off the field. Another toss play. Look at Demery. Nobody wanting to get in front of number two. That is Anna Garza. And she will lose that battle every time. Touchdown, Atlanta. Brittany Demery is an excellent closer, finisher. When she gets the football, she goes downhill. Even if somebody came up, she was going to go through them into the end zone. Great run. They brought in Demery to have kind of a lightning and thunder approach with Jesse Locklear. There's not been a lot of lightning, a whole lot of thunder thus far. The thunder is there. It was against Chicago. We're seeing it right now tonight. Now a toss right. Brittany Demery, nobody wanting to tackle her. Cassandra Bills, that was the worst attempt I've seen at a tackle. That'll extend Atlanta's lead to 21 to 13. That's twice now that Bills did the Olay tackle against Demery. She did it on the first touchdown. She did it again right there. I think Austin has to make its mind up if it wants to play defense. They put so much energy into that vertical passing game. It's almost as if the defense just steps to the side and wants their offense back out on the field. Well, Bill saw a freight train coming right at her. There's a way to get her down without going head on, but she's not putting any effort in at all. I think I may have overanalyzed that one. I think I was just pure fear by Cassandra Bills. Now a first and 10, ball at the 15. That's a handoff to Lalani Lopez, a lot of wide open turf. Lopez gaining seven yards, and that'll take us to the end of the first quarter. A competitive one between the Austin Acoustic and the Atlanta Steam. Atlanta drawing blood late, up 21 to 13. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. We sit there and I prep and I prep and I prep and this is how you fucking repay that coverage for myself and your coaches. By setting up a shitty effort in the first quarter. Continued frustration from Dane Robinson as we welcome you back to LFL football night. The Austin Acoustic and the Atlanta Steam, the hometown Steam up 21 to 13. I don't think this secondary of Atlanta has ever seen a shotgun arm like Winfrey has. I mean, some of the balls she throws right now, Brady couldn't throw better. A second and three. Ball at the Austin 22 yard line. Marshall flanks Winfrey to the left side. Quick dump off to Marshall. A lot of open turf. And Marshall breaking free and into the end zone. What a beautifully set up play by Austin out of the break. What a great call by Mike Oliveira. They let the pass rush, the blitz come in. They set up a screen. Look at the blockers in front, the whole offensive line. A great cutback by Michelle Marshall, and she runs into the end zone. Great play and great execution and great play call. Wow. Just when Dane Robinson could not get to a higher level of frustration, his defense gets mauled again. And give credit to the offensive line, but I think that was Michelle Marshall making an incredible cut to the outside. She saw where her blockers were, and there were three of them. She came back behind them, followed them, and went into the end zone. And we've got our first penalty. Five to snap, delay a game. 10 offense, five yard penalty, repeat the try. That's tough. You've got to take advantage of these opportunities against the Atlanta Steam. That'll back them up for the extra point. Austin trailing this one as it stands, 19 to 21. Again, I got to go back to that play call. That is great scouting by Mike Oliveira to come up with that screen pass. Awesome. Backed up to about the six yard line. This will be a two point attempt by the Austin Acoustic, a poor snap. And Winfrey just recovering it and getting smashed against the wall by Adrian Purnell. Not a good time for this to happen. Starting center, Brandy Stolte is out of the game with possibly a broken arm. 
Nicole Stoffel was in. Her first snap is off the money, and it cost the points right there. The value of the center to quarterback exchange in the LFL is almost as important as having a good quarterback. How many times have we seen poor center play in the LFL? And it's all preparation. The backup center, Nicole Stoffel, has to expect to get in the game and be ready to play. Right there, she was not. A first and 10 for Dakota Hughes in the Atlanta offense. Ball at the Austin 15-yard line. Fakes the handoff, rolling left into the flat complete. Ariana Barton, that'll be good for four yards. Good play action play on first down. You get a good solid four yards. Now it's second and six, easy pass, easy completion. Now it makes it easy for the offensive coordinator, Mark White. Forget Mark White. How about the targets for Dakota Hughes? Ariana Barton at five foot 10, and Adrian Purnell standing in at five foot eight. Hughes has got to love that, a second and six here. That looks like a draw play to Jesse Locklear. Great defensive stop. Kendria Robinson, the athletic corner, coming up to make the stop. You really got to like the way Kendry Robinson went through the trash. She read the draw and stopped that for no gain. Locklear, a great north-south runner, but not elusive. Same for Demery. The, I don't think Atlanta really has that kind of running back that can evade rushers, kind of like Michelle Marshall of Austin. That's why I was surprised about the game plan by Austin head coach Mike Oliveira to stop the running game and let Dakota Hughes pass. A third and six, they're gonna keep it on the ground with Locklear. And look at Jesse Locklear making us eat our words. A gain of 13 yards, that'll be good for Atlanta first down. Locklear, part of an explosive Atlanta offense. Let's meet their starters. Keandre Williams, wide receiver. Lauren Ziegler, wide receiver. Ariana Barton, your tight end. Adrian Purnell, your tight end. Dino Jowski, center. Jesse Locklear, running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. As we've seen so far, it's fun watching this Atlanta passing attack going to Lauren Ziegler down the field. A quick slant. That one complete to Jesse Locklear. Locklear now jawing at that secondary as we meet Austin's starting defense. Melissa Romero, strong safety. Cassandra Bill, safe. Kendria Robinson, lockdown corner. Ana Garza, strong safety. Brandy Solti, your center. Brenda Lynn, the end. Allie Dudley, defensive end. A second and five slant to Lauren Ziegler. Push me again, oh, bust those motherfucking ass, bitch. And Ziggler having a little fun with that Austin defense. That'll be good enough for a first and goal. She's usually not like that. Gabauer came in late while she's trying to get up with a knee right to the ribs. This Austin defense trying to keep this game competitive as Atlanta is on top 21 to 19 and threatening here. Ball at the seven yard line. Hughes under center, handoff, Ziegler trying to get to the outside and swarm tackling by that acoustic defense. That'll be a gain of two yards, make that Jessica Salazar, who also plays a little bit of middle linebacker. That's what I said, get the play, get the play, you stupid fuck. Huddle, 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 huddle. Gina Wachowski, the Steel City. Pittsburgh girl talking trash to Austin. All of Atlanta talking trash tonight. I don't know why, but they are. I think they're trying to intimidate what is a young team in Austin, but it's just not working, especially with that defense. They are not intimidated at all. A second and goal play, handoff. No, Hughes is gonna keep it. Getting down to about the one yard line. A great deceptive move by Dakota Hughes. That'll set up a third and goal. Showing her athleticism, there was nothing there. She actually ran the option not the way it was supposed to. She bent it out, she bowed it back, made a great move to get yardage on that play. Hughes not getting a lot of credit for her mobility, but one of the more athletic quarterbacks in the LFL. A third and goal play, split backfield. Handoff, Jessica Salazar. A lot of physical play. And that's gonna result in an Atlanta touchdown. 
Watch the block by Dina Wajowski, the road grader up front. She just blows away Allie Dudley. Salazar walks in the end zone almost untouched. Dina Wajowski, an all-fantasy center, opening up the way for the rookie, Jessica Salazar. Salazar, all kind of talent. They kind of shut her down before that play, but look for her to be a star here in the LFL. Atlanta now setting up for the extra point, and this is a dangerous area if you're Austin. This game is still competitive within reach. You've got to do something when you get the ball back here. 100% right. They didn't expect to give up 27 points already in the first half. They have to score when they get the ball. A toss left. Brittany Demery again with the alligator arm tackles. They are really attacking the corners for Austin. Great call by offensive corner Mark White. He saw that all game long. The cornerbacks, Bills and Romero, they don't want anything to do with tackling Brittany Demray, and it shows you can right, right, run right at them, and they're not going to do anything. The only physical defender in that secondary that I've seen, I'll give credit to Anna Garza as well, but been really Kendria Robinson. The two other corners are soft, as, as all can be, and, and that's one thing you don't want to be credited in no. as a defender is soft. They went to the Deion Sanders school of tackling at cornerback. A first and 10 ball at the Austin 15. That is Marshall in motion, fakes it to Marshall. Winfrey in the open field, stiff arming her way all the way down to about the 24 yard line. An impressive nine yard run by Winfrey. Another great call by Mark White, the offensive coordinator. They had a jet sweep action, which keeps the edge, the outside, the middle linebacker, and the defensive end went for the jet sweep. Winfrey did a great fake, nobody there. She got nine yards. A second and one. The offense has delivered here through, what, first half play pretty much. It's been the defensive side of the ball for Austin that's really struggled. I'm really impressed with the play calling of Mike Oliveira and the execution by this offense. A second and one. That is Winfrey going back to Bills wide open. And into the end zone. I'm not sure what that Atlanta secondary is thinking right now. They were in a cover too, but the safeties got sucked up. Watch the way Winfrey looks down the gun barrel, steps up in the pocket and delivers a strike to Bills. They were in zone coverage and they're still getting burnt deep. That looked like Alfie Gore was expecting help over the top by Adrian Purnell and Purnell was late getting there. The cornerbacks thought they had help over the top with Purnell and Fox Birdwell. They weren't there in time. Another great throw and catch by Winfrey to Bills. A one-point attempt, a quick dart, a lot of traffic inside. Kind of a poor decision by Winfrey throwing into traffic. They tried the quick slant, it wasn't there. She should have tucked it and tried to get in. There was absolutely nothing there. Great defensive stop by the secondary. I think what I'd be worried about if I was Atlanta is you're letting a young team like this kind of hang around. They sit down, shut up, I see it. Guys, I don't know what else to do. We can't play man, we can't play zone. Period, period. He is right and totally frustrated. The reason you play cover two is to have two safeties. Half the field and half the field, nobody gets behind you, and they just did. Atlanta's offense back out on the field. A first and 10 from the 15, Dakota Hughes back to drop, going to her favorite target. That is Lauren Ziegler. And Ziegler has been an absolute beast here in the first half. This is perfect timing. Right when she plants, makes a breakout, perfect throw, the defender can't get there. Perfect timing, that is great execution and playing passing football. You can see the numbers here in 2017 with Ziegler. Not exactly the type of season she's used to, but perhaps she's hitting her comfort stride tonight. Right now, she is absolutely the go-to receiver for Hughes. From the shotgun, a first and 10, rolling right, a kind of a lob pass. I don't think she liked the coverage and throwing it out of bounds. That is the experience of a four-year quarterback. We've got Dina Wajowski mic'd up. She looks like a fucking idiot. Get her out of the game. Holding on Ari? Not the fucking kick she did? Are you fucking with me? Holding. Number nine, number nine offense. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Head referee Gregory Edwards hearing it from Dina Wajowski. Watch as he gets knocked the fuck out. 
Dina Wojowski pleading her case to the referee. Ariana Barton apparently got kicked before she held, but the referee did not see or call the kick. Now, if you get kicked, but you held somebody, does that negate your hold? It should be two fouls. You got a hold and a kick. Oh, you're talking about that? That's a personal foul on the kick. Okay. Yeah, we're not playing soccer. You can't kick people. Down. I got you. I'm taking notes, Bobby Huco. First and 10, ball at the 21. Look at Hughes. I, like I said earlier, her mobility is very underrated. Hughes showing her speed getting to the edge there. Great read on the speed option. Big gainer again for Hughes. And that'll take us down to the two-minute warning. A competitive game here in Atlanta, Georgia. The hometown Atlanta steam only up by four on the resurgent Austin Acoustic. So then my fight's gonna be a delayed fight then. That's fine, just okay. get there. Okay. They go sit there fucking kid to me, but what's he doing in the goddamn field? We, we can't play zone, we can't play man. Our defense is shit in the puck right now. Continued frustration on the Atlanta side. And the more of that that lingers, you kind of like Austin's chances in the last two minutes here and going into the second half. There's no way Dane Robinson thought this score would be 29-25. That is a third and six reverse. Lauren Ziegler. Lauren Ziegler can do just about anything against this defense right now. They brought her on a jet motion. Great call again by Mark White. Everybody was going to Jesse Locklear. The play was going left. They brought the jet motion around. Ziegler came. Watch everybody going left. She had the ball. Nobody outside. Great block by Wajowski right there. Opened up the edge. She walks in the end zone. Lauren Ziegler again. What a night she's having. You talked about the seal block by Wajowski, but how about Adrian Purnell? And then Wajowski just kind of letting up as she was about to hold. She let up a very impressive play by the veteran up front. This is a two-point conversion. Toss right. That is Brittany Demery. Demery now three for three on the extra point attempt. The way the cornerbacks for Austin tackle, I would do that play all night long. It cannot be stopped the way Bills and Romero are coming up. The Atlanta lead now 37 to 25. I alluded to it earlier in the second quarter. This is very dangerous territory for Austin. They cannot afford to have this game blown out here. Although they have the offense to play catch up, I just don't see that defense getting a stop. You're right, you're absolutely right. In fact, that's why I didn't necessarily like the game plan that Mike Oliveira had, stopping the Atlanta offense and letting one of the gunslingers for Atlanta throw the ball down the field like she is the whole first half to Lauren Ziegler. In a shootout, I think Atlanta would win this one. First and 10, ball at the Austin 15. In this one played offense, now back to work again down the field. This time well overthrown, nearly intercepted by Alfie Gore. Gore should have picked that one off, but the pressure got to Winfrey. That's what they have to do. She threw a bad pass, she wasn't open, Bills wasn't open, she threw it up there. Got lucky that wasn't picked off. That was actually Citrus Fox Birdwell dropping that interception. There's a look at Birdwell. The rookie safety has been burnt often here in the 2017 season. Well, they put her deep on that one. After getting beat twice already deep, they have the safeties way back now. A second and 10 across the middle. Winfrey throwing into a lot of traffic. That was intended for Leilani Lopez. Covered by Quinna Franklin. They have the two safeties back 20 yards right now. That's where the opening's gonna be underneath. They're taking away the deep ball. Austin has the offensive players to work the underneath routes. They are small slot type receivers with the exception of Cassandra Bills. This could play to Austin's favor as this game goes on. A third and 10 ball remains at the 15. A three-man rush thrown at the feet of Leilani Lopez. Winfrey, after a very impressive start, starting to look a little rusty. Winfrey not sharp on this drive at all. The opening was there to hit Lopez underneath. She would have caught it and got the first down, but the ball wasn't even close. Brittany Demery trying to get this Atlanta Georgia crowd up. A vital fourth and 10 for this Austin offense. 
Ball at the 15-yard line. Winfrey will remain in the shotgun. An empty back set. Dropping back, now Winfrey taking off with it. Eluding the first defender, but will not get there as a sea of Atlanta defenders get after Winfrey. Not a good drive at all for Tashay Winfrey. She had time in the pocket. They only rushed two defenders. She could have stood in the pocket till somebody got open, but she left the pocket, tried to run for the 10 yards, and didn't even get close. It appears that this Austin defense is getting a little greedy. They want everything with one shot down the field, not willing to work underneath. Well, that's the problem, and the underneath is there. And they can throw underneath, but the running game's not there either. Either Right now, you mentioned it. You know, they're playing good in the first half, but if Atlanta gets on the board here, it's a 20-point ball game. Great field position for this offense. Taking over at the Austin 21, wasting no time, but overshooting the intended target, Lauren Ziegler. Again, a straight go route for Ziegler. She tried to just outspeed. Melissa Romero, she had great coverage. The throw wasn't there. Good play by Romero. Plenty of time here for Atlanta. Still having timeout remaining. And 128 on the clock with only 21 yards of field to pay dirt. Somehow this Austin defense has to come up with a stop. Second and 10. Fakes the draw play. Now a little option. That looked like it deflected off the head of Lauren Ziegler and out of bounds. Cassandra Bills, we've been on her all night, made a great play. She read the option. She stayed on the quarterback, made her make a bad pitch. Good play by Bills. They're going to mark that as a two-yard loss, setting up a third and 12. Ball back at the Austin 23. Again, a lot of time remaining. This has got to be Lauren Ziegler territory. Ziegler, and right now, Dakota Hughes, you have a chance to step on the throat of Austin. She needs to do it. Third and 12, buying time in the pocket and connecting. That is a seven-yard completion to Ziegler. Great play again, great pass, keep it low so it won't be tipped up and intercepted. But the problem right now for Atlanta, I see, there's no secondary receivers. You expected them to come up with a number two receiver after Petra Zero retired, but right now it's all Lauren Ziegler. And this is an interesting territory. You can see Atlanta's willing to let the clock run down. It is a fourth and five. They want to make sure if they don't convert here, they don't give Austin's offense that much time on the clock. A fourth and five dart. What a completion. There is the arm strength of Dakota Hughes zipping it into Lauren Ziegler. And the talent of Lauren Ziegler, double covered. She just put it in a different gear, created separation. Great play. Hey, Ruff, Ruff, can we, we can't get time added. We were calling time out for Angler. At least 10 seconds ran off. Come on. Dane Robinson wanting every tick of that clock. We're under 20 seconds. Atlanta calling a timeout hey. here. All right, what's going to happen here? Offense is going to score. Once again, play everything up overhead. We can't let them get a cheap one on us. They can't score when there's going to be about 10 seconds left. Hey, whatever they come out in, it's going to be big sky. Big sky. Nicole, get some penetration, okay? Brenda, come on big now. Get some penetration. Penetration. Both sides Let's understanding. Going. Let's get them going. Get them going. The importance of what is about to happen in the final few seconds here of the second quarter. This is still a 12-point game within reach. Okay, now, we're going to get this motherfucker back with about 10 seconds. We're going to play back really bad. We're going to throw the slant and come back with the next one underneath on the stem. We're going to kill it if we don't score. You really got to like the confidence of Dane Robinson, the head coach for Atlanta. He assumes they're going to score, and then he's going to have his secondary playing deep so Austin can't throw the bomb. A first and goal. Dakota Hughes on a release and completing to Adrian Purnell. Hey, we talked about the triplets in the pregame, and they're coming up big here in the first half with Lauren Ziegler, Adrian Purnell, and of course, Dakota Hughes. They came with an all-out blitz. Nobody covered Purnell. Everybody's going for the running backs. Purnell wide open in the end zone. Hughes just delivered the ball. Great call. 
An excellent release design play by Adrian Purnell. You can see not a big factor in the offense, but when they need her in the red zone, she's usually very clutch. With the lack of anybody stepping up to be the number two receiver, I think Purnell's gonna see the ball a lot more. And Brittany Demery again, converting on the extra point. That'll extend Atlanta's lead to 45 to 25. Austin's gonna have to change their front right now. They're going outside, the cornerbacks cannot tackle Brittany Demery. The defensive ends are gonna have to contain more so she can't get outside. I just think it's a size issue. The sizing just doesn't work out well for Austin. They are not built to go up against some of these bigger teams like Atlanta. A first and 10 crossing pattern. That's Cassandra Bills breaking through arm tackles. Austin will need to call a timeout here. The clock continues to wind down. I don't think this offense realized it. And they're gonna call this the end of the half. And I rate Mike Oliveira trying to call timeout. He tried to call timeout. Apparently they're gonna give him the timeout. You can see Atlanta just walking off the field. Timeout. We still have time remaining on the clock. The first half is not over. Wow, what a break for this complete. offense. Austin call a timeout, we'll have one more play. It's that third and final timeout of the first half. Gregory Edwards indicating that Austin did call a timeout before the half. So Tashe Winfrey and company will get one more shot at the end zone. Five seconds. Great call by the referees. Yeah, you gotta put some more time. It looked like Austin had called Please a timeout. Please reset the game clock to three seconds. Please reset the game clock to three seconds. Hey, you're gonna play that consistent. If you're gonna put time on for them, come on. That's bullshit. One Scott, keep him out the end zone. Big Scott, keep him out the end zone. Go. Dane Robinson was halfway to the locker room and was probably enjoying a Gatorade. Now his defense has got to come back out and get one final stop here. Has Dane Robinson been happy about anything here in the first half? I mean, you have to put time back. Still enough time for Tashe Winfrey in this offense. Number 10 has the arm to get this into the end zone. This should be the final play. I am not sure why they went underneath to Cassandra Bills. And apparently we've got time for one more play here. Bad play selection, but the good thing about it is they're going to get another play. But you're right, you got to throw the ball up in the end zone, even with the deep cover two back there in the end zone. Give your receivers a chance to go up and get it. Me. You got to like your chances if you're Austin against this Atlanta secondary that routinely has allowed Austin receivers behind them. You can see Ziegler and Fox Birdwell nearly 30 yards into the end zone here. Winfrey rolling right complete to Bills and Bills will not break four tackles. Suspect play calling late in the second quarter. Two plays, you have a chance to get on the board with no time left in the half. You gotta throw the ball in the end zone. That'll bring us to the end of the first half. Atlanta comfortably up 45 to 25. The most embarrassing half of football on defense I have ever been a part of as a head coach, period. The most embarrassing. An upset Dane Robinson despite a score of 45 to 25 as we welcome you back to LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. Bobby, through the first half of play, what stood out? If you love passing and offense, it was an incredible show. For Austin, to Shea Winfrey, she set a team record with 143 yards passing in the first half. That's a lot of yards, but you also didn't mention she threw for four touchdown passes. Very impressive for Tashe Winfrey. Now on the Atlanta side of the ball through 20 minutes of football, what are your thoughts there? I go back to the quarterback position. Dakota Hughes was rock solid. 10 out of 12, two touchdown passes. But she might have been overshadowed by Austin Tashe Winfrey. What I was disappointed was the Atlanta running game. It wasn't there, despite the fact they have studs in the backfield. While the Atlanta run game may have not done any damage outside of the red zone, inside the red zone, they posted some points. Let's look at the first half scoring. Early on for Atlanta, it was the power back, Brittany Demery from four yards out. And if you didn't get enough of Demery, she followed that with another touchdown run. Then it was Locklear followed by Lauren Ziegler all on the ground for Atlanta. 
for Austin. It was air delivery courtesy of Tashay Winfrey connecting early with Michelle Marshall, then coming back to Cassandra Bills from 35 yards out, then going back to Marshall for 26 this time. And if you didn't have enough of that air attack, connecting with Cassandra Bills for another 26-yard touchdown pass. That brings us to our halftime score of 45 to 25. Let's take a look at the first half stats. The story has been the lack of defense in the first half with the offenses racking up almost 400 yards. Unbelievable. It's gonna come down to which defense can make a couple stops here in the second half. That'll do it for us here at halftime. Buckle up and get ready. The second half kickoff is next. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to the second half of LFL football night as we look at our two starting quarterbacks. It's been a long time since we saw a shootout like this. Dakota Hughes, 10 out of 12, 118 yards and two touchdowns. And look at Tashea Winfrey, five out of nine, 143 yards and four touchdowns. Unbelievable. Michelle Marshall of Austin will get us underway. A nice high deep kick. That is Lauren Ziegler on the return. A collision with Cassandra Bills. Lauren Ziegler does not wait to get hit. She throws a stiff arm, delivers a blow to Cassandra Bills and gets good yardage. I love the way she returns kicks. Now Atlanta up 45 to 25, an opportunity to truly break this game open. What do you do here? Do you get conservative with Jesse Locklear and Brittany Demery or do you continue the passing game? They have a strong running game. I would go with that right now and see if Austin can stop them. This is a quick screen to Lauren Ziegler. And that Austin defense, not great tackling initially, but that was a great secondary tackle by Kendria Robinson. Cassandra Bill, she's getting destroyed by Lauren Ziegler. Great play by the defense. Ziggler got a little knocked around right there, a little shaken up, but they're trying to get the ball on her arm to just make something happen. The five foot four, Kendria Robinson knocking Ziggler out of this game. Now a second and nine handoff, Jesse Locklear. No, a little deception, Dakota Hughes keeping it. That'll be a gain of five yards. Fooled our cameras and me. Actually, she made the wrong read. That's that read option she's been doing all night long, taking it outside. She should have handed the ball off to Locklear, but she made a smart move after she missed the handoff. She followed Locklear and still got some yards. There's a look on the sideline. Lauren Ziegler still out of this game, but we did see her start to put the helmet back on. That is a good sign if you're an Atlanta Steam fan. She'll tape on a piece of aspirin and she'll be back in the game, one of the toughest players in the league. Third and four play, handoff. This looks like Jessica Salazar lowering her shoulder. A gain of nine yards, open field tackle by Kristen Beckman. Salazar is an up and comer here in the LFL, a great one cut runner. You saw it right there, one cut, boom. Gets a lot of positive yardage. The size in the backfield for Atlanta can be very intimidating outside of Locklear. You hate to see a Brittany Demery or Jessica Salazar coming downfield at you, especially if you're a corner. And in the trenches, they have one of the finest offensive lines in the LFL. A first and 10 ball at the Austin 17. Hughes faking the handoff, going into the end zone. There looked to be some contact between Kendria Robinson and Lauren Ziegler. They're saying they just caught up, got their feet caught up, but I think that was pass interference right there because Ziegler has been wide open in the corner of the end zone. Come on! I'm not sure Dave Robinson even believes his own frustration sometimes. They gotta make that call! I'm with him, they have to make this call. She's breaking free. She gets pulled and yanked down. That is pass interference. I'd like to get another look at that. That looked like maybe incidental contact between Robinson and Ziegler. But that's one that usually goes to the favor of the offense. That would have been a touchdown back at the end zone the way Ziegler's been playing. She yanked her down. That should easily have been pass interference. 
A second and 10 ball remains at the 17. A toss right to Locklear. Locklear just reading her blocks. An impressive run of 11 yards. They have to help out their cornerbacks. Nobody's coming up to tackle Locklear or Demery or even Dakota Hughes outside. The outside running game is open all night long for Atlanta. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This Austin defense has had a really tough time tackling, so why not keep it on the ground if you're Atlanta? A first and goal toss play. Jesse Locklear getting blown up against the wall by Michelle Marshall. Really, Marshall and Kendria Robinson have been the only ones on defense that have done anything. They bring Ziegler in motion to crack back. You'll see her right here. She comes in, tries to block Marshall. Marshall breaks off and makes a solid play to stop a touchdown. Second and goal, ball at the one now. The clock very much so in favor of Atlanta at this point as we go under six minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Atlanta up 20. This is Locklear. And that is another Atlanta touchdown. Mark White, the offensive coordinator, he knows a good thing when he sees it. He's attacking the quarterbacks of Austin. He's actually pulling guards out now, lead blockers. The quarterbacks for Austin, they're in shell, they're in shell shock right now. I mean, wow, they've been getting hit all night. If you're those Austin corners, putting out this kind of game film, Cassandra Bills and Melissa Romero, if you think this is bad, wait till you line up again and you've got this kind of game film out there. They're going to have to change the whole defensive scheme to help out these cornerbacks because they cannot tackle. That is an extra point handoff, Jesse Locklear. This time going up the A gap, that'll be good. Extending Atlanta's lead to 53 to 25. Solid offensive scoring drive by Atlanta. They knocked a lot of time off the clock by keeping it on the ground. Austin flat out can't stop them. On the ground, why throw it when you can run all night? To your point, an impressive drive. Seven plays, 32 yards, chewing up nearly four minutes of the clock. And if you're an offense, you gotta be balanced. Atlanta's showing that. Austin is very one-sided with the deep ball. That and on defense, we mentioned it at halftime. The team that's gonna win is gonna be the defense who can make some stops. Right now, Austin cannot stop Atlanta at all. Atlanta bringing the blitz now to Winfrey. Winfrey cannot break open, does gain two yards on the quarterback keeper. Ever since Atlanta went into that zone defense, Austin's offense looks out of sync. They don't know what they're doing right now. There's no running game and they can't throw underneath. It's going to be interesting if they can get anything going here in the second half. Second and eight here. Atlanta's going to bring a three-man rush. Now dropping back Salazar into the flat. That is complete to Michelle Marshall. We talked about what Austin's offense has got to take what this Atlanta defense is giving it right now, it's the underneath. Great read by Tashea Winfrey. That's what you gotta do. They're playing 20 yards back at the snap of the ball. You do the deep outs like that, that'll be open all night. So they eventually gotta change their coverage. A 13 yard completion to Michelle Marshall. Number two defense that has declined. Result of the play, first down. That was a penalty on Atlanta. Did not get the number. Regardless, the play will stand. It'll be a first down Austin. Ball at the Atlanta 20-yard line. When Tashea Winfrey stays in the pocket, delivers a football, there's nobody like her in the league. Winfrey now with Michelle Marshall flanked to her left side. They're going to go inside draw play to Marshall. Marshall gaining six yards very impressively. Now just bucking off the defender, Brittany Demery. That's okay though, that's a solid run, six yards, they're playing off that pass completion, but that's what they need to do, mix it up just like that. I love the fire that burns inside Michelle Marshall. I don't think you can say enough about that, especially with the team losing like this, coming in without a win in the 17th season and having that kind of fire. We talk about Lauren Ziegler, Michelle Marshall is out of the same mold, a great complete player, you can put her anywhere on the field. That was an ugly looking play by the offense. And Winfrey just being pushed back to midfield. 
No game. That looked like Brittany Demery and Adrian Purnell were all over. Get up! 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 Still a lot of confusion with the scheme in the secondary. That was Dane Robinson going after Alfie Gore, the corner. And he'll not be happy about this. That's Leilani Lopez, a 10-yard slant completion. To Shea Winfrey looking all LFL on this drive. She's taking what the defense gives her. They're playing too deep. She's just picking them apart underneath. And look where the ball is. They're almost in the end zone. Now Lopez is limping. This is a team that's pretty beat up. They're already missing Steph Wicket, the starting center, and now the backup center, Brandy Stoltz, is out. They can ill afford any more injuries. That's a handoff to Marshall. And Marshall getting into the end zone. This Austin team is not ready to throw the towel in just yet. You really got to love Michelle Marshall from San Antonio. What a jump cut. There was absolutely nothing inside. She took the handoff. Boom, popped it outside for a touchdown. She's playing her heart out tonight. This is kind of one of those games. If, you ever, if you're old enough like Bobby and I to ever watch John Madden call, call a game, he loved gutsy players like Michelle Marshall. You can plug her in anywhere, any position, and she'll play like that. This is the extra point attempt. An ugly looking toss. That's intercepted. Jessica Salazar will take this to the house. It does not mean much except for a stop with Austin, but a big emotional boost after Austin score. We've talked about Jessica Salazar, the all around athlete from Miami. Her upside, her ceiling is so high in this league. Watch this. She picks it off three yards deep in the end zone, takes it coast to coast. Look at that running ability. You can put her anywhere, tight end, running back, receiver, wherever you want. That is pretty good speed for a middle linebacker. I realize she plays some running back as well, but that's some really good athleticism by number 12. She is around the ball and makes big plays every game. And that'll take us to a media break. Atlanta up 53 to 31. That is head coach Dane Robinson who earlier kicked out Alfie Gore. I guess Alfie Gore won that argument and is back in this game. I think there's a lot of motion on that sideline right now because of how many points they let up in the first half. He just wants that defense to play solid defense. He gets on him. He gets on him hard. Alfie Gore's got an attitude. What most defensive players have some kind of attitude. Good to see them back together. A first and ten completion to Lauren Ziegler. That was good for seven yards. Ball now at the Atlanta 22. That is a handoff to Brittany Demery. No, another keeper by Hughes. And Hughes wanted no part of Kendria Robinson just stepping out of bounds. A smart move. Smart move. Great play call again. I like the way they're mixing it up with the pass, the speed option, the read option like that. And Hughes is playing good football right now. A seven-yard run by number 18. That was good enough for Atlanta first down. Ball now at the Austin 21. Hughes will remain in the shotgun. Sending a runner in motion. Now a handoff to Demery. Demery trying to cut to the outside. That is not exactly within her forte. She is a north-south runner, only gaining a yard. That's what Austin has to do. They are physically outmatched. But when you gang tackle, make like a SWAT team, get around the ball, help everybody out, that's what happens. That's Mike Oliveira. We talked to him about the challenges of being a coach. As a first-year head coach here, the. The, the biggest challenge is, is taking an organization like this and, 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 and getting rid of those bad habits. You know, we had a, a lack of understanding of the game. We had to teach the game, make them understand what we were trying to accomplish on offense, what we're trying to do on defense so everyone's on the same page. We're not just trying to be competitive, we're trying to win a championship. 
really like Mike Oliveira, the way he approaches football, the way he's a detail guy. This team is going to be successful. Maybe not this year, but it will happen. Meanwhile, his defense just gave up another 17 yards to Brittany Demery. As we get under 20 seconds here in the third quarter, Dakota Hughes and the Atlanta team comfortably ahead, 53 to 21. An opportunity to add to that lead here. Hughes rolling right, throwing across her body and connecting with her favorite target in best friend, Lauren Ziegler. Great play by Hughes. She stretched it out to the right while Ziegler was going the opposite way across the back of the end zone, one-on-one -on -one against Melissa Romero, beat her, and a great cross-body throw. Watch this throw, that is hard to do, and she threw it right on the money to Ziegler. Threw it to the outside, where only Ziegler had an opportunity at it, and what a coming out party for number 14. Has not had the start she wanted in 2017, now returning to all fantasy form. She is one of those receivers that is uncovered when she's covered. She will come down with the football. And no headline here. That is Brittany Demry converting yet another extra point attempt. That'll extend Atlanta's lead to 61 to 31. It was not that long ago. This was a close game. And that'll bring us to the end of the third quarter with Dakota Hughes and Ziegler connecting once again. Back for the final 10 minutes of play in Atlanta, Georgia. This crowd loving every moment of a 61 to 31 lead over Austin. It's playing out just like we called it at halftime. What defense can make some stops and Atlanta has done that in the second half. A first and 10 for Tashay Winfrey and Austin going down the field and almost connecting with Cassandra Bills. It seems like this Atlanta secondary is finally settling in. They're mixing it up. Watch the corner blitz from the outside. Serious pressure. That's going to take some of the accuracy out. Bills was double coverage. Great play by that D on Atlanta. That incomplete pass now setting up a second and 10. And regardless of whether you get 30 points or not here in the fourth quarter, you got to keep a momentum here if you're Austin. Last series, they mixed it up well. They went underneath, they moved the football. Let's see if they can do it again. A second and 10 to Shea Winfrey just tucking it and running. She'll gain five yards. That's one of the things that's improved in her game. Last year, she would have thrown an interception or an ill-advised pass. Now she just tucks it and lives to fight another day. And gets five yards. Now it's only third and five. You can run it if you want or pass. You can do whatever you want. Ball at the Austin 20-yard line. Winfrey back to pass, throwing it over the middle and just over the head of Michelle Marshall. It looked like her and Marshall were not on the same page. Marshall was wide open. She ran a great route. She stuck the foot and ran the out route. Just a bad throw by Winfrey. If she would have connected, it would have been a first down. A fourth and five for this offense. If they have any hopes of crawling back into this game, they have got to convert here. They certainly have the firepower to put some points on the board. A slow snap back to Winfrey, a design release. Great open field tackle by Jessica Salazar. And Marshall very slow getting up. Atlanta came with a double cat blitz. Great play call, dumping it over the blitz to Marshall, but watch Salazar deliver the lumber. But somehow, Michelle Marshall got the first down. That will be a first down for Austin, a vital pickup. Ball down at about the 16-yard line for Atlanta. This offense does seem a lot more sophisticated than it was in 2016. They move the football. I am impressed by this offense. Defensively, they got a lot of work to do. And Cassandra Mills breaking through arm tackles, gaining 12 yards on that quick screen. They have all the tools on offense. They got the speed receivers, the quarterback can throw, Michelle Marshall. They need a power back and they'll be a good team. That is Cassandra Bills, who outside of Jolie Efezekai of Pittsburgh, is having a huge season at the wide receiver position. Fakes it to Bills. Handoff to Kendria Robinson. 
And look at Robinson explode into that defense. That'll be good for 12 yards. This Atlanta defense coming in, we thought they were a stout defense. And look at the score. Akusa has 31, and they're still moving the football. The offense is not a problem. That is one person that I just do not understand why they don't use her more on offense is Kendria Robinson. She's an absolute spark plug. That is Deshae Winfrey under heavy pressure, just dumping it off to her center. That was complete to Nicole Stoffel, but that'll be a loss of a yard. Right there, Winfrey tried to make something happen, saw Stoffel open. I can't blame him for trying to make something happen and down 30 points would have been better just to throw that one away. A second and goal, the clock continues to run. And the hopes of Austin coming back diminishes with every click of that clock. And if you're not aware in the LFL, the clock continues to run until we get to the two minute mark of the fourth and the second quarter. A lot of confusion in the backfield. Now Winfrey just flinging it out of bounds. We do have a flag. This could be intentional grounding. Winfrey just looking a little confused there. I'm not sure she was ever comfortable in that play set. Not at all. I, th I think there's a lot of confusion. They had different plays. They had a jet motion coming. Everybody got stacked up on the snap of the ball. That's going to go against Austin. Head coach Mike Oliveira looking over that play card to see if there's a 30-point play on that card. Illegal motion, offense, two players in motion at the same time. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. You could see the frustration on Mike Oliveira. These are opportunities you've got to capitalize on, and his team is going backwards right now. You can see the frustration setting in. Right now, there's a lot of confusion. They're down 30 out of nowhere. A second and goal, Winfrey under a lot of pressure. And I'm not sure if she didn't lose that ball. That is Keon Harrison on the recovery, and absolutely, Atlanta taking over. A great blitz put on by that front line. Adrian Purnell from the back side. She gets to Winfrey, gets the ball knocked out before she's tackled. Adrian Purnell, she is a fourth player. Coming from the edge to right angle to get the quarterback and made her fumble. Now Austin tossing out the challenge flag. I believe they want to see if Tashay Winfrey's arm was moving forward there. That was a second and goal, so they would have two more shots at the end zone if they can get this call Austin overturned. It's telling them the ruling on the play of a fumble. Gregory Edwards letting us know that that is indeed what Austin wants to take a look at here. Watch this pursuit by Purnell. All the way across the field, it's close. It looked like Winfrey at the last second was trying to extend her arm, but you could see Purnell also coming in for the strip. I think that's a fumble. I agree, if I was a ref, I could not call that a pass. Michael Oliveira hoping that this call is overturned and this offense gets another shot. An offense that has posted 31 points. So if nothing else, that's the silver lining in the, cl in the cloud here if you're an Austin fan. Your offense looks great. It's that defense that has to shore up a bit. They have to shore up the defense. The offense, I mean, I'm not sure, but to Shea Winfrey, she's going to be in the LFL record book tonight for passing yardage and attempts. I mean, I don't know if she has the lead on that, but she's up there with his performance. Winfrey did throw four first-half touchdown passes, has slowed down considerably here in the second half, and obviously a little bit of that has to do with Dane Robinson and the adjustments that Atlanta made in the, in, at halftime, I'm sure. Well, that's what good coaches do. You have to adjust at halftime. See what's going on, what the problem is, and make a change, adapt. And he did that, and it won the game for him. Meanwhile, Gregory Edwards and this crew are taking their time looking at this challenge. This is a vital play here in this game, despite it being a 30-point game. With this offense, they could rack up some points pretty quickly. Well, that's it. And, and the problem is the defense. They're, they're, right now, they they can't stop me and you from scoring a touchdown, it looks like, those cornerbacks. They have to come up with a scheme, some blitz packages come up. They have a tough game next week. They come right back and play L.A. They have to do something. That's another powerful team they have to play. Austin is going to be tested here, as you mentioned. 
seven days from now, next Saturday night, they return home to Austin, Texas to take on the silver and black Los Angeles Temptation. And it looks like Gregory Edwards has finally figured this thing out. And we'll get the call. Upon further review, the rooting on the field of a fumble stands. First down, Atlanta. That is indeed the play on the field stands. They're going to call it a fumble recovery Atlanta. It took them a long time. They could have just called us. We would have told them. That was, a, that was an intensive review, to say the least. I felt like we were watching a Major League Baseball game there. Dakota Hughes now going back to work at the, about the 12-yard line of Atlanta. And I got a feeling we're going to get a healthy dosage here of Brittany Demery. You know the problem with that is when I spoke with Dane Robinson before the game, the one thing, I don't know if you're going to like this, but he said if they get up big, they're going to keep scoring points because if it ever comes down to it in the playoff hunt, there is a point differential. So he's not going to lay off of the pedal here in the second half. That is Brittany Demery gaining nine yards. And yeah, if there is a tie sequence, one of those tiebreakers is point differential. So when you're watching an LFL game and you see one team on top big and continuing to get after it, that's what they're going for. That is a handoff. Jesse Locklear getting into the secondary. That was a 20-yard gain and then lowering the shoulder. Melissa Romero has had a tough night here in Atlanta. Watch the blocking in the holes up front. The great cut there by Jesse Locklear. She might be buying dinner for this offensive line tonight. They're blowing Austin away, and she is running the ball incredibly. Romero coming in really high and just getting blown back by Jesse Locklear. Locklear having a sensational game tonight. I expected Brittany Demery to be the big back, but Locklear's taking over. Austin bringing the blitz against Hughes. That'll go incomplete, setting up a second and goal. Ball intended to Dina Wojowski. They tried the center release play. It worked a lot in previous years. Wojowski can catch the football, but not didn't happen that time. You know you're up 61 to 31 when you're targeting Dina Wojowski. The no, off <laughs> no offense to Dina Wojowski, but that wouldn't be my go-to receiver down here. I think that's what they were trying to do, confuse Austin. They confused everybody. Second and goal. That's Dakota Hughes rolling right and just overshooting Jesse Locklear. I'm not sure Locklear has the same athleticism as number 14 to go up and get that. Well, that's the problem this year. They can't find a number two receiver. They thought it was going to be Deandra Williams. She had a couple big drops at her rookie start, so they haven't gone back to her. And right now, it's all Lauren Ziegler. A third and goal. The clock continues to run. As we approach the three-minute mark of the fourth quarter, that is a toss right. Jesse Locklear just latching on to her tight end, Adrian Purnell, and gaining three yards. Solid play by Austin. They did not let go of Locklear. The blockers were there, but they stood everybody up and held a big gainer to only a couple yards. Locklear has really starting to come into her own in this offense. As we've always talked about, she is a three to four yard average back, but we're starting to see her break through a little bit. It's a great combination. The way she's playing tonight, the way we know Brittany Demery can play, it's a good one-two combination. A fourth and goal for this offense. Wide open in the flat, Ariana Barton. She will see that football floating in her sleep tonight. She was wide open on a fourth and goal. That's why they don't throw the football to Ariana Barton. She's got hands like feet. That should have been an easy six. That's got to be the toughest catch when you're by yourself and you see that ball just floating up in the air. And there's the frustration of number nine. I'm not sure Mark White, the offensive coordinator there on the right, is ever going to call her number again. You don't want to see that when the team reviews the films. When that play comes up, I think she's going to close her eyes. Austin going back to work here from their own six-yard line. This is a team, unlike the Denver Dream, will not simply throw in the towel. They're going to get after it. This is Deshay Winfrey in the flat. That is complete. Kendria Robinson. And look at the speed on number four. 
That is a 23-yard completion, but most of that coming after the catch. The way Kendria Robinson's playing tonight, she's demanding the ball more often, and they have to get it to her. She is a game-breaker. Great speed. She plays with a lot of fire. I love her. There are a lot of playmakers on this offense. Kendria Robinson being one of those that have been underutilized, especially with the play of Cassandra Bills. They really haven't needed her on that side of the football. Well, look at the three with Bills. Michelle Marshall has that same kind of heart. Winfrey's got the heart. They got some players on offense. And that'll take us to the two-minute warning. Back for the final two after this. Next week on LFL Football Night, the Los Angeles Temptation head to Austin, Texas to take on Chastity Morales and the Austin Acoustic. Finish this shit out and go score. Okay, go fucking score. They are not fucking 30 points better than this football team, goddammit. They're not. Go score. Mike Oliveira still encouraging his team. And on the other side of the ball, that is our game MVP, Lauren Ziegler. That's starting to become a little bit of a tradition in the league. If you're game MVP, you still get a beer with two minutes left. There's a lot of players that look forward to that. Lauren Ziegler, I mean, the game's incredible. She already has 10 catches. I mean, that alone might be a, a league record right there. Meanwhile, down on the field, Austin still on offense. A first and 10 after that 23-yard completion to Kendria Robinson. Winfrey back in the shotgun, empty back set. Gonna try down the field into the end zone. Nearly intercepted by number 10, Amber Clark. Clark was there, one-on-one -on -one coverage. To Shea Winfrey, threw it up there a little bit short, a little bit longer. A receiver might have had a chance. Good play by Clark. Austin not willing to throw in the towel, as I mentioned earlier. They're still taking shots at the end zone. There are some teams that would just run the ball and get out of this arena. A quick throw into the flat, again finding Kendria Robinson. Robinson looking very impressive here in limited touches in the fourth quarter. That was a nine-yard completion. But listening to head coach Mike Oliveira, I mean, he's right. This game was either anybody's game at halftime. Now they're down 30, and they got to stay fired up to play L.A. So that's why he said score another touchdown right now. A third and one. Again to Kendria Robinson in the flat. That'll be enough for an Austin first down. Obviously, it's academic at this point, but it's great to give these two a few more reps. I think Tashe Winfrey's learning also. She knows who to get the ball to, who's going to make some yardage and make some plays where you don't have to throw the ball 40 yards. Get it to him underneath and he'll get some yardage. A first and goal ball at the Atlanta 10-yard line. Austin remains in the empty back set. Handoff to Kendria Robinson. A great tackle there by Megan Bellamy as Atlanta starts to open up that bench a bit. Atlanta, they played a decent game on offense, obviously. I mean, a quarterback to Cody Hughes, phenomenal game again. Lauren Ziegler, phenomenal. The bad part was the secondary in the first half. That's what they have to shore up as they advance as the season goes on. A second and goal here, ball at the Atlanta 14. After that four-yard loss by Kendra Robinson. This is Winfrey back to pass in the flat. That was through the arms of Michelle Marshall. One of the only passes she's not come up with tonight. That's the only bad play. You are correct for Michelle Marshall. She had a heck of a game in a losing cause, but that's the only bad play that dropped. Now a third and goal as Winfrey discusses it with Melissa Romero. Ball remains at the Atlanta 14-yard line. And this is kind of a feel-good attempt at the end zone. If you come away with a touchdown here, you've got some positivity. A little dump off to Romero. So after all that discussion, an incomplete pass. Not a great play selection there, but you're right. If they somehow can score points here, it's good for the confidence, momentum in going into. They're playing again, like you said. Next weekend, they're playing L.A., who's another powerhouse. I'm not sure why they're targeting Romero there. As I mentioned, as she gets tapped out by Anna Garza. 
Romero having a tough night tonight at the corner position. And now looking even more sloppy on the offensive side of the ball. Well, you're right, but Romero has not had a good game, but Bills has looked good on offense, but not on defense. And Stoffel, the backup center, continues to struggle. A poor snap back to Winfrey. And that'll do it for Austin as Atlanta takes over with less than 10 seconds remaining. More than likely going to take a knee here. We just said they want to have some momentum going into next week's game, and this is what you don't want to have, a box snap on your last play of the game. They've got to figure a way to get Brandy Stolte, the center that was knocked out early in the first half, back on the field, because Nicole Stoffel is out of shape and not the best center out there. Well, you know, she didn't expect to play. You can't really blame her, but she has to be ready to play in case somebody gets injured. Now with under 10 seconds remaining, Atlanta not in the victory formation. No, they're going to take a shot down the field. And that is Lauren Ziegler into the end zone. And while that may look good on paper, that was pure classless football on the behalf of that Atlanta coaching staff. Wow, this is absolutely putting your foot on their throat. This is a facial. You think they're going to take a knee and they throw a bomb for six to Ziegler again, which is an incredible play for her. But you know what? You're right. 67-31. I know Coach. I know what he's doing. That point differential he thinks might come into play, but I don't know. I, I think that's just pure classless football on the behalf of the coaching staff of Atlanta. You are comfortably up ahead here. You're going to see this team again. You don't want to leave this taste in their mouth. The ball game is complete. I'm not sure what that call was. I think Atlanta wants one more play for the extra point, but they're going to say this is a ball game. And Atlanta winning this one comfortably, 67 to 31. You're 100% correct. That play, Austin will never forget. It might not be this year, but next year, if these two teams play against each other, watch out. And you could see the look of disgust on the face of Michelle Marshall. On the other side, pure jubilation after that tough loss to Chicago. Atlanta rebounding and winning big at home. That'll do it for us here in Atlanta, Georgia. For our technical director, Wesley Jenkins, our producer, Brian Petrus, and my partner, Bobby Huco, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.